Hey Jim, the boss wants a decision on our carrier Ethernet equipment provider, so I'm going to recommend Juniper and their MX series routers. What do you think? Based on what? Look, we know cloud computing, mobile internet, and video traffic have exploded and will continue to grow. And it's being delivered to all forms of devices, big and small, anywhere and anytime, right? Yeah, sure. Well, the last thing we want to do is deliver poor quality of experience to our customers. So why run the risk by deploying Juniper MX series routers? What makes you say that? Well, I just finished reading the findings from a recent independent third-party test of carrier-class Ethernet services routers, and it concluded the Juniper MX 960 underperformed in quality of service, multicast for video distribution and streaming services, and high availability and resiliency. Not only that, the test results highlighted fundamental flaws in the MX 960 architecture that can only be resolved through a platform redesign. Really? Come on, it can't be that bad. No? Okay, let's look at QoS. Despite the importance on having predictable performance for voice and video traffic, the MX960 failed to maintain protection of high-priority traffic under congested conditions, resulting in poor quality of service. Any clue why? The way I understand how their architecture works, it's a lot like an airport with thousands of travelers arriving to check in for their flights. An airport? What? Sure. Just like data, voice and video packets traversing a network, travelers from each airline fly in different classes and are directed to separate check-in queues based on those classes. You mean just like higher priority voice and video over data traffic? Exactly. But that's where airline-specific prioritization ends. As travelers complete their check-in, they then move toward the airport security line, which combines all classes of travelers, regardless of airline. So, if there's a huge influx of travelers of a particular class, more of them will get through security ahead of similar or lower class passengers for all airlines. These passengers may even miss their flight as a result. Huh, that's bad. Yep. Same principle with the MX-960, mainly because it lacks any hierarchical QoS controls in its forwarding architecture. So, you end up with bottlenecks in traffic heading toward the HQOS hardware that's responsible for enforcing QoS policies. Add in random bursts of data packets, and some video packets start getting dropped altogether. Even worse, the HQOS hardware is unaware that the drops have occurred. Yeah, that's not so good. That's just one of the problems. The MX960 also performed poorly in multicast scaling. Another design flaw? Yep. That's because Juniper's multicast implementation uses a technique they call distributed tree replication, which creates unnecessary dependencies and drains resources throughout the replication scheme. How does that work? Think of it this way. Imagine a school principal employing a phone calling chain to communicate messages to all families. The principal only needs to call two families. Each family receiving messages then calls two additional families until the messages have been distributed to everyone. Seems like a good approach. Oh yeah? Well, suppose any one family is not available to receive a call. Then every family beyond that point in the chain will not be notified. Countless families would experience some period of delay until the principal finds out and tries to resend the messages. And that's not all. To also ensure each point in the chain receives the information in a timely manner, each family would need to maintain one line to receive messages and two additional lines to forward them. Now you have a resources drain that creates contention when all lines are unavailable for delivering other messages. Or delivering other services in the case of routers, right? Exactly. One other thing. What if the message sent by the principal included a request to sign up for a limited number of spots to see a student activity? The parents higher up in the chain would get the best opportunity to participate. Not exactly a fair approach, but it's exactly how the MX960 architecture approaches multicast. Wow, I can imagine that being a major problem in the business world, say, on the stock exchange floor where delivery of timely information could give one stock trader an unfair advantage over others down in the multicast chain. That's a perfect example. Anything else? Well, for one reason or another, there's likely to be a disruption in traffic, so it's important to know how the routing platform is going to handle these interruptions. Let me guess, not very well by the MX960, eh? Not according to the report. It said there were tests that used various hardware failure methods, and the MX960 was unable to ensure high availability, including results that demonstrated 30 seconds of complete outage for over 80% of the viewers. Whoa, that's high. Sure is. 
In fact, the MX960 couldn't quickly recover from any type of connectivity failure, with one case requiring a full minute to recover with severe performance degradation and substantial packet loss. Can you imagine the outrage of our customers watching the end of a championship sporting event when suddenly the video signal is completely lost for nearly one minute? Uh, I can imagine us looking for new jobs when the boss finds out. You better believe it. That low level of resiliency is unacceptable to service providers like us. We wouldn't be able to satisfy our service level agreements and deliver a high quality of experience to our customers, especially where video delivery is involved. Wow, Jim, it's a good thing I ran this by you first. That report just saved me from making a big mistake. Guess I better do some more research, huh? It's probably best. That is, if you want to get any sleep over the next couple of years. <laughs>